Once again, thank you for uh, letting me come and chat with you today. I appreciate it. And uh, for the folks, the few folks who will be watching, welcome to Petri's uh, Family Game Store. Uh, my name is Fitz. Uh, I'm running the, the Game Night Reviews blog, and this is the first of what I hope will be several uh, video doomajabis in the future. So uh, with me is Cameron Crawford from Petri's. And uh, we're just going to chat today, so bear with us. So, um, how would you describe your store to someone who's not been here before? Because, I mean, game store has kind of its own st stigma or description right, right. in Which people's is minds. Precisely what we tried to, to get away from in, in our original vision statement was to uh, have, a, have a game store that is a little more board game friendly, uh, not to exclude the other other styles of gaming, but um, to, to be open and bright and uh, be family friendly for all ages, uh, including the the uh, demographics that don't usually uh, hit the game store radar. So, uh, female for one, mm -hmm. uh, children and, and older ages. Uh, so we were we were getting the, the whole scope uh, okay. of, of our neighborhood. How much has the location of the store made a difference in oh, foot traffic and everything? A um, Love or hate it, Briargate definitely is uh, aimed at that demographic as it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, we knew in order for it to work as a family store, we had to to be in an area of town that had that, that sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, unfortunately, a large part of uh, game and comic stores get that stigma simply because uh, uh, rent is good. So uh, those kinds of strip malls where you get the good rent is usually the kind of places that have that sort of dungeon feel to them to begin with. Understood. Do you hear your phone? We'll let it go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so congrats on being here for a year, or a little over a year, Thank right? Yeah. Uh, 14, 14 months or so. Months, exactly. Yeah. Um, what was your highlight of 2010 over the last 12 months? Um, other than not figuring out how to, to uh, get the answer machine to turn on, there we go. Okay. <laughs> um, Technical difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It, it's a it's a whirlwind. I mean, as we're preparing the 2011 calendar, and uh, even just this last uh, two weeks has, has uh, been a couple of things have changed that will actually change our regular standing um, events, and it's kind of thrown that all up in the air again. And looking back on the events that we wanted to include and realizing, wow, we, we've actually, from what we ran in February versus what people want us to run in February, um, it has multiplied. And uh, so there's several events that stand out in, in my mind as, as we've been going back over them that, wow, that was really a, a good idea and that really worked well, but at the same time, have we actually come to a point where we've outgrown some of these things in just mm -hmm. a year? Mm -hmm. um, so whether that's like, fond memories, um, not sure I necessarily call them highlights. <laughs> um, the, the citywide uh, gaming event we did with the other stores in town um, was a was a big that was a big deal simply because we had record breaking uh, crowds show up. That was over the summer, right? Yeah, it was over the summer, and we had something like I think we recorded seventy people both days. Um, so folks. that was um, that was astounding simply to see that there was a market for the hobby and see that there was actually that many people out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, not only interested in coming to see what we had to offer and, and meeting other people, um, but actually being willing to come back the second day for that, uh, two days in a row. So, um, yeah, that was that was definitely a tribute uh, to what we're here for and, awesome. and, and the industry. So, you're looking at your 2011 calendar. Oh, so, yeah. what kind of events are you looking forward to in 2011? Any new? Well, we've actually got, you know, both, both sides of the spectrum. Um, We've, we've been asked to do a little bit more traditional, so we're going to try and do a uh, traditional card game starting on the first Sunday of every month, okay. uh, starting in February. Um, we'll be pairing that up with our chess day, which we're also moving to the first Sunday of every month. Cool. Makes Mostly sense. Mostly because they seem to go together as far as the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have the College Springs board game uh, group meeting on the first Sunday, and a lot of those guys are also in our chess, chess club. Okay. So it'll be basically just a day of, uh, of traditional. Um, and, and more of the Euro strategies. Okay. Um, so that that's really interesting. On the other complete other end, um, we've just 
just started our Friday Night Magic. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how uh, we can get one of the mainstays of the hobby uh, introduced into our culture without changing our culture too much. Um, and I don't know, I, I think I'm excited to see that we can take both spectrums of the hobby and make them work together okay. without it really affecting, you know, like I said, the atmosphere or anything like that. Sure. So. Everything from card games and traditional games to non-traditional board games, okay. role-playing, collecting card games, all right. that good exactly. stuff. So. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we also have the uh, the new Star Trek uh, minis game coming out, so that's that's infused a little bit more uh, interest in more of the tabletop. Uh, while we don't do a whole lot of that, yeah. um, you know, Star Trek, Star Wars, the the, the, the minis games that uh, appeal to the younger age um, definitely fit our culture, and so we're going to be exploring a little bit of that too. Cool. Obviously, you have a lot of events going on. What is your personal favorite event that you've, that you've had in the store? <laughs> um, some weeks, it's when I go home and get some sleep. Um, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah I, I like our... Um, we have a lot of, like, Saturday night specific special events that um, really tend to be our, our regulars. Now, the regulars change. They evolve. Mm -hmm. You know, people drop off. People come in. So it's it's not that there's specific people that I'm prejudiced to making sure I'm always with kind of sure. thing, but it's really nice when you get to know people and they get to know you and you actually have a building relationship, mm -hmm. and then you have a, an event that makes it so it's only the ten of them. Mm -hmm. um, it, it feels it feels nice. It's it's just it's close. It's uh, something that we don't have to try as hard, but yet we have to oh, have just as much fun. Cool. Um, so an example of that might be the uh, the party game show that we do, uh, which is we take a highlight of all the party games. And we do it up in a, an actual game show format. Cool. And okay. um, again, that tends to attract teams of the regulars because it's teams of three to four people, and in order to find three to four people, it's usually the friends you've made at the store. Sure. Cool. Um, so, along those same lines, do you, what kind of games do you personally focus on? I mean, I'm a role player. You're you're less of a role player, as we talked about the other yeah, day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, tabletops, mini minis, and, and role playing is definitely the uh, back side of my brain that I don't get into as much. Um, uh, I grew up with adventure games. I grew up in the, the days when Games Workshop actually made board games and, and uh, West End games, and uh, so you know I've definitely got those those nostalgic classics like Talisman and uh, Gosh, Arabian Nights and things like that that have uh, uh, definitely influenced where I come from. But at the same time, um, there's a part of me that needs something a little bit deeper thinking. And uh, so a lot of the Euro strategies tend to be my focus as well. Um, with that in mind, though, um, I try really hard to make sure that our calendar and our events is spread out. Sure. Um, but your personal preferences don't really color too much the, the events and correct. games that you, you carry here. Correct. And... Um, so yeah, we have you know, a ton of uh, role-playing events, and um, one of the things that I had to do in the first year in 2010 was to make sure we weren't spotlighting um, role-playing too much. Sure. Because we had enough people volunteering and enough ideas that, um, I mean, that's the nice thing about role-playing as a whole is that, you know, storytellers have ideas, mm -hmm. and um, they, they have a lot of ideas. <laughs> so um, The overflow. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we had, you know, that calendar, issue of, okay, we've got to throw a kids event in here, we've got to throw a board game event in here, something to keep things balanced, and uh, that, was, that, was, that was a constant challenge. Now, with uh, World of Warcraft taking off, and um, uh, with, with you know, introducing Friday Night Magic, uh, there's going to be a concern of having too much uh, CCGs. So, it's a balance. Um, yeah, that's going to be a constant battle, I think. Um, occasionally, you know, you'll get a, co a comment from a board gamer saying, well, I've been noticing a lot of card events lately, as though to say, you need to pull back on that maybe. So um, that's that's something, keep everybody happy, keep everybody balanced, it is a goal. Cool. Um, have there been any surprising products that you've had in the store that have done really well, or an area that has done really well? Obviously you have, one of the things that I love is that you are very family oriented, so you have a little bit more of puzzles and games that are more directed towards kids in that area. Right, yes. Um, yeah, our, our kids, our kids section does well. I think because we're one of the few stores, if not the only store, that has that specific kind of selection. Mm -hmm. um, 
but it maintains itself. And it's it's interesting coming into this the, the business. Uh, we were focused on Euro games and the kids section uh, when we first opened. Right. And I think we still have the same amount of stock. So it, it's like that, that, that ebbs and flows and keeps itself Pretty breathing constant. in the constant. Um, I'd say the area that we've, we've expanded the most is CCG and role playing. Um, there, that's a lot more trend oriented. Sure. Um, products that have stood out in the last few, oh gosh, um, Fancy Flight's retake on Warhammer um, has been really big for us, mostly because it feels like a board gamer's approach to role playing. Sure. All the bits. And more the, minis related. Yeah, yeah, really. And you don't have a. Uh, it's not actual combat map, map so much as it's ambiguous uh, flow of uh, how far away are you from the character, but not really illustrating it. I got um, it. The, the strategy board gamers actually uh, relate to that. That's cool. And um, so it's it's kind of across the, the gap. Um, specific titles, I mean, right now, honestly, deck building games uh, rule the roost. So okay. with the advent of Dominion, we had Thunderstone come in. Thunderstone is probably the game that all of our board gamers own. Hmm. Um, I, I, I think we have at least eight people automatically every time a Thunderstone expansion comes out that, that ask for oh, pick stuff up. So um, that's been a big deal. Resident Evil is another deck builder, deck builder that just came out. Um, uh, we got was a Puzzle Strike is basically a deck builder that's with Pogs that's that's coming out next uh, next week or not this week. Uh, we've had a lot of requests for so that mechanic mm -hmm. um, has been huge. Uh, that we, it's portable. <laughs> yeah, well, and it, it also uh, we see a lot of the CCGers will actually get Resident Evil or Thunderstone off of our sample shelf and uh, play that in between games. So it, again, that's another cross gap mm -hmm. product. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a board game <laughs> technically that uh, appeals to CCGers. Um, so any kind of product like that where you bring two of the groups together is, is going to be successful. Cool. Okay. Um, if you could share one thing with an audience today, what would it be about your store? Whether it's about today, next week, this year, whatever it happens to be. Wow. Um, <clears throat> pretty much what we already talked about. Um, you've hit on exactly the things that I'd want to talk about. Um, <laughs> wow. On the spot. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm excited about some of the things that are coming up. I'm excited about our events, and you know, with that in mind, I'd say um, definitely keep an eye on our calendar, keep an eye on our website. Uh, we do a, as best a job as we can of keeping that um, front page has a, has a little scroll of everything going on this week. But if you click on the actual events tab, you know everything for the month. Um, keep an eye on that because our events really, I think, is what um, keeps the store going, gives people motive to come in and meet other people and uh, ultimately that was what we were all about we wanted to make sure that we created a community center and uh, without that community center vibe um, we wouldn't exist and without the events we wouldn't have an excuse to, to have people show up so I mean really I think our events are, are our heart and uh, uh, we're, yeah, where we're at where we're going cool well, thank you very much. I appreciate You're it. Well, thank you. And I'm sure we'll do this again. So there you go. End of the first chapter of our video blog series. <laughs> Have a great day.